Hey guys, what's happening? So, in uh, my previous video, I've shown you the process of me rebuilding and converting this uh, lathe to CNC. And one of the issues I had, I just got this thing to fire for the first time with my VFD. This actually has a three phase motor. So, I have a VFD and I just got it to fire up. Uh, then it started making some horrible racket. Um, so, this motor is a Hitachi motor. Um, I'll go around and I'll show you the, 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 the face plate. But the bearings sound horrible on it. So when I first fired it up, it sounded pretty smooth and all of a sudden it started getting all noisy. So, uh, let me turn around and I'll show you the, the, the nameplate. Alright, so here is the nameplate right there. So it's a 1966 Hitachi um, 1.5 horsepower. But look how big this motor is for 1.5 horsepower. It's gigantic. I'm like, I can't even pick this thing up by myself. Um, yeah, it's a solid cast iron old school uh, lathe, you know, where they made it, you know, commercial lathe. Not like a home user lathe. So take a look at that. It's a trucker lathe, and I'm currently doing a CNC conversion. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, watch my, uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, but the cool thing is, it actually had the bearing right there on the bearing plate. It actually had the ball bearings on it. So the cool thing is I was able to get these front plates off and it looks like I can replace the, the bearings. Uh, I've already taken the front covers off because I actually tried to pack the bearing. Yeah, I took the bearing apart and tried to repack it with some lithium grease and uh, no go. Uh, still pretty bad. Like I can actually just feel in the bearing that there's a flat spot or something wrong with the bearings. Um, but the bearings were on Amazon were 10 bucks each so or a compatible bearing the same dimensions. Um, you know, what's it called? Like a 630... It's like a 6306. But, uh, hopefully I can get the bearings off there without having to pull the whole motor apart. Because I know the other one, the new one will slide on, so I don't know if this other one's been... You know, it's... How old this bearing is, you know, if it's original bearings or not, so... Um, I'm gonna spray a little lube down there on the journal. See if I can get in there to maybe loosen up a little bit, so... Hopefully it's not pressed on. I mean, even though I do actually have a bearing press. Um, but like I said, this thing's so heavy, I can't... It's in an awkward position, too, so I can't really... I, I don't want to break out my engine hoist to get it out of there, so... Um, Alright, so let's get this, uh, get this going. Let me show you... Uh, well, these are the bearings. I don't know if I showed you this or not. But these replacement bearings right here. NTN. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where these were made, but... I think NTK were the original ones. Um, but they feel good though. Yeah, only ten dollars a piece though. So, um, yeah, it's almost. I, I didn't know. I know should I should I put twenty dollars into the bearings, or should I just buy a whole new motor, like a more efficient motor? But I do actually kind of like this motor, just but it's huge for the amount of horsepower. So one point five horsepower, I think it's gigantic. All right, so let me show you. These here's my VFD panel here. See if it's a uh, start. Okay. That way you can kind of see how noisy it is. So what is weird is when I first fired this up, so for the first 30 to 45 seconds it was actually pretty quiet. And then all of a sudden it got super loud, so I don't know if I what happened to the bearings. But uh, alright, so I might have to take this front cover off. So I'm gonna unbolt the bottom base, maybe flip it around this way or that way so I can pull out the front. Um, maybe I'll flip it this way. Uh, that way I can actually pull, hopefully pull the whole uh, mechanism out the front. And uh, I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to use my bearing press, but we'll see. And I can't remember if this thing's called the stator or the commentator. But um, this is like one of those things where you don't really want to do this, but, you know, at the same time I'm going to be happy when it's done because I, I'll know it's not going to be a mystery anymore what's inside the, the motor here. At least I'll know it's clean and with new bearings, so... 
But yeah, it's obviously a headache to do this. Alright, so I'm hoping, because I said there's no manual for this motor. I've looked all over Hitachi's website, everywhere. Um, you know, so I'm hoping I can just pop this out the front, this front cover will come off. Hopefully I don't have to take the back one off too, but since I don't really know how the bearings are in there, um, yeah, because they, they pull out like that. I, I can, they're kind of almost free floating. Um, so let me get this. I don't know if I can just yank it. I'm gonna have to do this with two hands. I'll do this on camera, but maybe I can knock it forward a little bit. Hit it with my rubber mallet. Alright, so yeah, I was able just to pop it out the front here. I'm just making sure that... Alright, looks like it just comes out. Um, it's almost like I feel like they're free-floating, but I'll no, I'll pull this out real fast. I can't do it with two hands, or one hand, so i got to put the camera down. Alright, so if you're wanting this as a brushless motor, it's a re-phase. But, so my thought was maybe somehow... See, like the, maybe like debris got caught in here somewhere and was rubbing that way. You can see it's pretty pretty messy and dirty in there. But I might have to probably... I don't know what I use to wipe it down because I don't know if I want to take the whole motor out and, and spray it off, you know? Um, maybe I'll take the back plate off and clean it out too. But I'm obviously going to clean this up. I'm going to blow it out with a uh, you know, degreaser. And the bearings themselves are right here. Um, and yeah, then you can see like someone's rubbing right in here. Kind of surprising to me, even though this motor is like almost pretty much like sealed almost, but look how much grease and oil is still in there. So, what I was thinking is maybe, uh, well, I mean, the front bearing actually seems, seems the usually the front bearing goes out first because that actually that's where the majority of the load is on it when it comes to the belts. Well, wherever the pulley is, close to the pulley, but uh, yeah, I want to get all that dirt. I don't know, that's a, gotta get that cleaned up. Let me show you the covers too. Alright, so here we go. Alright, lots of debris. Alright, so I can't put the motor back together knowing it looks like that, so I took the whole thing out of my brush wash this whole thing. Look at that. Yeah, I mean that's kind of I mean anytime when if this piece of debris goes under there, it's gonna cause all kinds of issues. Sit on the RPM, make noise, etc. Got these in the sun. So I'm gonna let this dry for night here. I might put some more paint on these ones, but um, yeah, super clean now. Um, yeah, they, tomorrow I'm gonna use my bearing press to get these out and put the new ones on. Hear them? This one's pretty noisy too. Alright, so while that's drying out there, I'm gonna. Um, get these bearings off. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I can't get this to fit in there in the current situation just because of this fan right here, but there's other ways I can get this off. I mean, I'll be, I'm going to be able to get it on in the press, but getting off because it's so close to here, I and mean, I have these things right here, um, I could do like one of these. I can't remember this before I come. This is a uh, ball joint puller, I believe, and steering wheel crankshaft puller. So if you notice, there's a couple of bolt holes. So I'm hoping I could just do this right here. And that will give it to me. But there's a, there's a kind of like a large washer down there and it's it's clamped all the way down to this thing right here. But you can just hear the bearings how noisy they are. So um so a couple bolts. I don't know what size these are. But alright I think I'll try the steering wheel puller first and then if that doesn't work I'll try something else but um, yeah, it's funny how I acquired all these different tools, I mean, over a 20 year period or more. Like, I got this one as a teenager, it's an American made craftsman. So, it's funny, I still have it, and I'm in my 40s now. So, uh, yeah, it's like one of those tools you don't use very often, but you're, you, they're great when you have them, like the bearing press and everything. But it's, yeah, like when you gotta do something, man, it's like either it's gonna be an easy job or a nightmare job if you don't have the right tools. So, two draw puller. This one I couldn't get on there. 
wouldn't go far enough apart to grab on. These were too far apart. Even though I do actually have a smaller bearing puller. So if this pops off, then I'm going to uh, try something else. So this I'm getting off. Um, combination of this a smaller version of one of these and then my steering wheel puller um, it's coming though so yeah because there's no clearance right here I can't get it in my bearing press to get it off all right so I got this off see there's like a little lip on there I feel like I didn't distort it that much I don't think at all that's a good sign keep bolt boxes right here yeah to get it so far down there it's like man it's difficult well, I noticed these ones are NTN Japan. I mean, it says Japan right there on them. This doesn't say Japan anywhere. So I know a lot of the Japanese stuff now is moving to uh, China. But also, uh, I mean, there's also knockoffs too. You never know. Amazon, you know, 10 bucks. So. All right, so if you're new to pressing on bearings, you want to basically make the support here and not here. Because this is only supported by the ball bearings on the outside ring. You want to support on the inside ring. Because you can mess up the bearing if you try to push it through here. So always push it from right here. Alright. Make sure that washer's in the right spot. And then just crank down on it. And you, your leg go, Mah. You sometimes you do. I can see it going down on there. See it? Okay, it's going on not that bad. Sometimes they're so tight you hear like a, you're like a creak. Okay. 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 Alright, I'm gonna take it off and see if it still spins, but I know it was like right on. Okay, good. I got actually I gotta go further down. Because originally this thing was tight on there. So what I have to do is look and see if the uh, shaft is bottomed out and then move these over. Okay, so we're gonna light here. This one this is on there tight now. Hopefully I'll clear it for the ball bearing. Uh, yeah, so I just spread the, my little separators part. See those little notches out here for the rounded edges. I just wanted to have to make sure there was a yeah, corner on each, at least on that inner, inner. I think it's the bearing race. Um, inner race. Like the bearing presses are like one of those kind of tools where it's you know always takes up a space, but man, you love that you have it when you need it. Um, so the bottom's gonna be easier just because I can support it on there. You know, the shaft comes through it, so it's less issues with it. Um, so, obviously, getting the bearings on is a lot easier than getting them off. Okay, that should be it. Yeah. Touch up fine gray. And I'm going to let the uh, coils uh, dry overnight before I put this thing back together. So I got this painted overnight, should be dry. I'm using Krylon uh, Machinery Gray. Garage is a disaster, got too many products going on here. All right, so this should be dry. The quills, I'm gonna put this back in there. So what's funny, it's so heavy, I have to, I can't pick it up as, as one piece, so I'm gonna pick this section up and put it back in the lathe. And uh, put the individual pieces back together. Yeah, this stuff is heavy. I mean, this is like this is steel. This is not, not aluminum. Put uh, it back on now. All right. So if you're wondering, this whole system is actually like a floating bearing, and it's held in place with these little uh, shims that go in here, and that kind of like keeps it uh, aligned. Yeah. Sorry for the background noise. I'm 3D printing stuff, but. All right, nice and smooth. No more, no more grinding. So I make sure it spins freely. All right, get those cap covers on. Yeah, it's so heavy. I'm gonna have to turn it back. All right, let's try this again. All right, so start run. Yeah, I do actually really like having this uh, Cat 5 cable. All right, start. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a lot quieter. <laughs> I mean, the bearings still got to break in too. I mean, these are brand new bearings. That's max speed. So actually, I got to change it to 60 hertz. The default is 50 hertz. So it's going to get a little bit more speed. All right, so I think that's the end of this video. And that's how you rebuild a uh, Hitachi motor. 
Um, yeah, just a couple bearings, and it's easy. Well, it's super heavy, but it's easy to take apart. I mean, you're gonna need some kind of bearing pull or, or bearing press to get them back on and off, but. Um, but all right, awesome. Only twenty bucks. Yeah, actually, I want to keep the Japanese motors. You know, it's way higher quality than the new stuff. So, all right, cool.